So you guys um, brought down the wall, which ended up being like a two-week journey. Um, and you guys walked back into town, and after talking to the guards at the gate, they talked to somebody else who informed them that you guys, you know, were soldiers and could be allowed in, even with the dragon. Um, so you guys stabled your horses and put your cart up for the night and went up to bed. Because by the time you guys were arriving, it was getting dark. Uh, you guys pretty much crashed after the long journey. Um, you weren't really able to talk to anybody about the events. Um, everybody just knows that you guys brought down the wall. So you guys will take a full rest, and you guys leveled up to six, which you should have already done. Um, you guys will wake up in the morning. Actually, no, you won't. Um, Forge, you'll be um, approached by Shell. She'll come up to you and say, uh, Forge, we need you... Um, basically, you need to follow me. Everyone needs me. I feel needed. Okay, Are let's go. Okay. Um, so she will take you. Um, she'll walk you through, basically, the uh, barracks of the fort. And... Um, walk you down to a room and she'll open the door and inside you can see just a single chair and it's a windowless room and she'll ask you to please sit in the chair <laughs> what did I do you've done nothing wrong this is the room of punishment no it's <laughs> been in here before no you haven't <laughs> yeah I'll sit down okay um so you'll sit down, and as soon as you um, put your hands on the armrest, um, straps will come up and strap you to the chair. Um, <laughs> so will your ankles. Um, and she'll close the door and walk away. Um, so the rest of you wake up, and Forge isn't there. Um, and... The rest of the soldiers that are in the room with you will kind of um, start moving towards breakfast. Is Fast Fire with me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. No, she's strapped down to a different chair in a different room. <laughs> no! I'm moving she's towards a... breakfast. Okay. I guess I do too. Okay, so you guys will go ahead and head down. Are you taking Frostfire with you? Yes, I'm keeping Frostfire on my shoulders at all times because I don't know how he's going to react to all these people. Okay. And I keep keeping her calm. Yeah, she's really curious as you walk through because it's just a new environment, but she's traveled a lot in her first, you know, two weeks of life. So she she's just kind of curious to see this different environment and all the people because you guys didn't take her into town earlier. Um, and you do get a lot of head turns uh, as you walk through and get breakfast and everything um, and request a meat tray for her. Um, a lot of people look at you strangely, but you, you're used to it by now. Yeah. So it's your tea um, thing. Yeah. I go sit um, by myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Oriana and... Oh, my gosh, your names. Eros. Uh, Eros and... What is Alan's character's name? Asmir will go get breakfast and sit with you. I'm assuming they'll sit with you. Yeah, I'll sit with them. And Oriana, this is the first time you have seen the barracks. Um, since you had, hadn't had been in the army or anything before. Uh, but you, you kind of have been assumed with this group. So they are basically treating you as if you were a soldier. Um... So you kind of just follow the lead of the others. Um, so you guys will sit down for breakfast. Um, as you guys do that, Forge, uh, let me go to this room. The fucking map? Yeah. Oh boy. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're sitting in this room and, um, it's... Oh, sorry, I don't know why Oriana's there. Um... <laughs> you're sitting in this room, there's no windows, there's light, uh, you're strapped to the chair, and after a few minutes, it's probably about 10, 20 minutes before somebody walks in, 
um, and they don't even talk to you, uh, they pull a lever next to your chair, and it kind of reclines back, kind of like a barber chair, um, and they start casting spells. I'm not, I'm not need, in need of repair, and also, <laughs> that's not how you do it. Because <laughs> you do so much about spells. Uh, they don't, they don't say anything. Um, after a few moments, a few more people walk in. All of them are, they all look like mages, um, and quite a few of them are uh, dragonborn. Um, so as you sit there, you begin to watch. Um, a light sphere um, materialize above you um, and they continue to chant or cast a spell for a few minutes and then as you watch the spear materialize in front of you or above you uh, you start seeing the events of uh, everything that has happened from you guys leaving Trevor Craig up until your return um, flash in that sphere. Um, you watch as they kind of, they'll, they'll watch some scenes and then discuss some things after each one. Um, and that takes a good couple of hours. He's being debriefed. <laughs> Basically. Um, so yeah, that'll happen. Uh, you guys will finish breakfast and you still haven't seen Forge. Which doesn't concern you too much because he doesn't eat. Yeah. So what do you guys want to do? You guys are released from breakfast. You aren't given any specific instructions yet. Um, I want to go find Shell. Okay. Yeah, and you guys can find her outside um, with some other soldiers. Basically just chilling before training later uh, after breakfast. All right. Um, I, I, when I see her, I walk up to her and give a nod and say, uh, Commander Shell, um, I was wondering if I could borrow some enchanters for a couple hours for a little project I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I don't see why that would be a problem. Um, I'm not really sure who you have to talk to. You. Um, who's in charge of the casters? Um, <laughs> your mother. Well, there is a um, like magic lab um in the fort. You could try to head there and see if somebody's willing to help. I do that, and I also look at Eros and tell him to follow me because I might need his help. Sure. Who do you need song at? Potentially me. I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, I didn't need a medically assisted suicide. So you two guys will head off. Um, and Shell will uh, mention to Oriana, I actually need you... Um, I actually need to talk to you anyway, so uh, you guys can head off and I'll speak to Oriana for a little bit. Um, and then Asbury will be left there by himself, but that's fine. Um, so you guys head off. Oriana, you'll be asked, you'll, Shell will ask, um, you to follow her. Do you go with her? Yes. Okay. Don't do it! <laughs> You're gonna end up with some weird, in a dark room surrounded by guys casting spells. A magic dentist. So you will be brought to a very similar room to this, um, but it'll have a table, and she'll ask you to sit. Uh. Okay, I sit down. <laughs> okay. Um, and she nods and closes the door and walks off. Um, it's probably... I mean, nobody comes in for about 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, so you're just kind of left sitting there. Um, so back to Forge. Change the room back over to Forge's room. Stop moving. 
Um, so Forge, you um, continue to watch this orb go through, and they discuss amongst themselves um, after they finish watching, like you guys walking into um, the fort and everything. You see the sphere disappear, and they continue to talk to themselves for a little bit. Um, then the straps are released, um, and you are told that you can be you're dismissed, and you can um, leave. Um, okay. <laughs> so are you going to head out? Yeah. Okay. So ni nice job, guys. <laughs> um, and you'll actually meet Shell outside the door. Um, and she'll say, um, that there is a new shipment of... Warforge that have just come in. Uh, they will need some training, and since you are the most successful Warforged to date, that um, they would be honored if you would train them a bit. No, the honor is mine. <laughs> All right, so you guys can head down to um, the training grounds, and there you'll see a good. Um, Almost, a, how many did I write down? You'll see, uh, Thousand. Five. Thousand. Five, <laughs> five million. Five Warforged standing there. Uh, she'll, um, she'll mention that they are changing in combat. Uh, they just, they're lacking in life skills. Oh, oh boy! Yes, yes, I understand. Is so he going to teach them about the the human delic delicacies? <laughs> Shh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was hoping he forgot about that. The first thing you need to know. Pulls out a handful of glass and like puts some in each of their hands. He's like, "Humans love this stuff." Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> you just keep broken glass on you. Yeah. And uh, shall we be like? I don't what are you talking about? I think I know what I'm doing. These are my people. <laughs> okay. Um, she'll kind of sit down and watch as you start training these other soldiers. And you guys have noticed since you've been back that there are way more soldiers than there were when you left. Um... You don't see any of the higher officials or anything like that that you saw in Traverick Rig, but there there are way more soldiers than you remember there being. Um, you um, also notice there are way more elven soldiers than there were before, which it's there aren't many elven colonies in the north, so it's kind of odd to you guys. Um, so Eros and Zerk, you guys had to. Yeah. The magic lab. Yeah, the magic lab that she kind of sent you guys off to. And you guys do see, once you walk in, there are several, like, experiments going on. You can see some mages doing various work, creating items, creating um, scrolls, or just generally researching. Mm -hmm. Alright, um, which one looks like they're in charge the most? <laughs> Nobody looks specifically in charge. Um, you do notice there's some higher ranking mages. Um, and that's about it. Alright, I'm gonna go to them. Okay. I'm gonna put my hand, like, softly on his wrist and say, you should probably let me do the talking. <laughs> uh, why? Why? I, I pause for a second, and then I realize, oh, wait. This is the other guy who's good at talking. Yeah. <laughs> yes, mage is doing majory. Uh, yeah, so you guys walk up to a guy and he says, yes, can I help you? Yes, um, I was wondering if I could get some help in crafting a magical item for myself. Okay. I will need four of you. 
for a couple hours. Um, he kind of turns around. Is anybody available to help with making an item? Um, some heads will kind of turn, and a few of them will stand up. He's like, oh, we only need four of you. Uh, so four guys will come up behind him. He's like, sure, I guess these guys will help you. Uh, are they good at crafting magical items or assisting in it? And all of them will nod. Alrighty. Then, uh, where would be the best station for me to, for us to do this? <laughs> uh, he kind of shows you where, um, there's some tables set up where other people are making items. Um, so you kind of just clear off a space there and it's kind of your own space to make something. Awesome. So now, do I roll now or how does this go, Kelsey? Um, oh gosh, let me pull that back up. It's been like three weeks since I looked at this. <laughs> Need some music. I believe it was a DC of fifteen to craft. Yeah. And are you going to just go ahead and make a uh, you're going to make a prototype or you attempt to? Yes. Okay. So you roll a d20 and you are going to add. Are you using a rig that you already have? Yes. Or are you crafting one? Okay. Um, so you will go ahead and add your arcana to that. Do I get any other bonuses because I have four other people helping me and Eris is going to. I'm going to use his inspiration. Yeah, I'll inspire him. Yeah, I'll give you advantage for having others that are helping you do it. Can he use inspiration on this roll? Actually, I'm not going to give you advantage. I'm going to roll with you. Because it you're essentially cutting down the time by having others with you. So they'll roll to you to see if it's successful. Oh boy. Okay, and, and inspiration. So what is it a D8? My inspiration's a D8. Can I give people inspiration? Uh, yes. Yeah, I it. inspire everyone. Yay. There's how many people there? There's uh, five. five. Yeah, five total. Four others. Not, inclu not including me? Not including you, Not yeah. including you, yeah. Okay, I will inspire four of them. Okay. The four that look least competent. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I want it too. <laughs> Right. I assumed you were one of them. <laughs> mm. Inspired the four least competent of the five. All right. Um, and I think I said this was going to take. Off. It was going to bring bring it down to one day. I think is what we calculated. Well, with three people, it's one day. With uh, four, it brought it down to half a day. Right. Um. All right. What is this DC if this item? So it's a DC of 15. If I get above a 25, I instantly make a prototype. Yep. Oh boy. Now I need to roll. Go ahead and roll. Am I rolling as well? Mm -mm. Nope. I'm. I'm doing it. You're just keeping everyone on task. He brought you okay. for uh, assistance, not to actually help him make it, but to assist him in making it. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, I have a zero in Arcana. Yeah, I do that. All right. Boo. It's still a pretty good roll. No, it's not. <laughs> it's 14. <clears throat> Try to do multiple rolls, or is just one? 
Um, no, just one. So basically what this reduces, um, after experimenting with the ring that you had, um, with the help of the others, you were able to produce a formula to craft the item that you were looking for. Because none of them rolled a natural 20 either, so. Close. Ooh. I thought you just had to roll above a 25. Um... Let me apply these numbers. If you do a natural 20, then it gets advantages and stuff, I thought. Uh, teen. Math is hard. The highest number I got was 24. Oh. Yeah. So. Very close, but not quite. Gosh dang it. Okay. Yeah, because it's just 10 plus the DC. Um, so you have a formula now, but that uh, ring has basically been used up. Uh, can you send the PDF for the um, info? I forgot to save it. On the magic items? Yes. It's a link. Oh, can you send that then? Yeah. Alright, so then what do I... How does this proceed forward then? Um, so you'll have to repay for everything, um, to craft it again, basically. Okay. Alright, I'll be back, and I go to grab a ring, and is there any way I can just get this done today now that I have a formula? Mm -hmm. Four people? Yeah. Um... Yeah, so you guys, they'll, they'll say, they'll basically schedule a time to meet back with you guys later today. Um, and you guys will head into town to find, there isn't like a jeweler in this town, but there is like a general goods store, so you head there to see if you can find um, a, a ring. ring. Um, okay. Which shouldn't be too hard. Um, so while you guys are doing that, let's get back over to Oriana. I need to get a token for this, I think. This will work. Oh, it's so tiny. Why did they make it tiny like that? Alright, so Oriana. Um, Kelsey, real uh -huh. quick. If we were in a workshop, didn't that mean we got a DC modifier? Um, I think you're right. Because if it was just one, then we would have gotten a prototype. This is Shadowfall. Yeah, you're right. It, you guys would have a plus one. So we did get a 25, so we have the prototype. Yeah, so let me get the prototype table. Doo -doo -doo. Good call. Wait, is it what kind of workshop? Is it a poor it, workshop? That's negative two. No, no, it's an average. They've been there for two weeks plus. They've turned it into an average. <laughs> average, yeah. I mean, the barracks have been here forever, but, uh, it's, I mean, it's a decent workshop. It's not, like, the best workshop in town, because these are still soldiers, but. So you have uh, to roll the d20. Yeah. Me yes. or her? Um, either of you. It, what's the rarity of the item? It's a common. Common. Okay, so just a flat d20. According yeah, to this. It. Okay. Um, okay. What'd you get? Um, so what's the item that you're crafting? I'm crafting a ring of shadows. Okay, so basically use it to cast shadow. <laughs> yeah, it's used to cast cast a minor illusion, which for me, it's only shadows, but it's in a 10-foot cube, and it can last for a minute, and it's activated a bonus round three times a day. Okay. Um, so this ring will be flawed, 
Um, the flaw is that sometimes the size of the shadow will be unpredictable. Oh, okay. Flood an entire room in shadow. But you won't know that until you use it. Right. Yeah. But for the sake, um, you'll know that it wasn't probably. It's not the best crafted ring, um, but it is. But it works, ring, and it, it may or may not work. So. But it may or may not work. <laughs> and now you don't have to meet back with those guys, so you guys can go off and do whatever you want. Woohoo! Okay, I thank everyone for their time, dedication, and for arrows for inspiring everyone. Yeah. And we leave. You're welcome. And don't forget to subtract some, because they'll, yeah. they'll ask for payment for that. Basically. Yeah. Um, How much? That one we said was going to be... I thought we were going to... We never got an actual price, because I was a metal hero, and I was going to talk them into a little bit, since it's not that difficult of an item to make. Eros uh, needs 20 gold. <laughs> Five gold per inspiration. Okay, I pay him that. This By the way, you... This will be 200 gold, um, so you can kind of divvy that up how you see. Okay. I mean, that includes materials and everything, so you don't necessarily have to give them ever much, but... Um, no, it'll be fine. I'll give them each 50 gold. <laughs> All right. So you guys uh, finish that up. Um, you've got a new ring to try out, um, and you guys head out of the lab. And we will sw ba switch back to Oriana while you guys are doing that. Um, also, while you're in there, you get several people asking if they could take samples from uh, Frostfire. Mm. It's not every day that somebody walks in with a, a live dragon. Uh... I have them write down what they request, but and I said them I will try, but she's very particular about who she lets around her, so I'll I'll see if I can get it. Okay. Um yeah, and you get several people asking for like blood, scales, teeth, claws, just generic ingredients okay. that they would you know, that are highly sought after. Heads, tails. <laughs> uh, Pretty well, much well, everything. Well, we'll see. She's She's only two weeks old, so she doesn't really have shedding any scales or teeth or anything. She hasn't gotten in a fight where she's gotten blood. <laughs> yeah, and she's not, um, being, like, a young dragon, she's not, like, brilliant white like a full-size dragon would be. She's pretty, it's, she's more of a pale white, um, and you get the sense that it's still blended with ice and snow better. Yeah. Um, but they're still impressed, because you walked in with a dragon. Um, so yeah, you guys are free to do whatever you want. Uh, you guys walk out. Oriana, you are sitting in this room, and a uh, man walks in. He's got some scrolls in front of him, and he starts reading over them. Um, and first he goes, please state your name. Oriana Galantara. And your hometown? Oh, gosh. Oh, crap. I don't even know if I know. Did we give my name, my hometown, a name? Uh, you can name it whatever you want. <laughs> Just name it something. Underville. <laughs> Underdark. <laughs> the Underdark? Underville. <laughs> I'm assuming. I'm I'm Rock assume Shadow. Say. Rock Shadow, yeah, that'll be That's good. A good we'll, one. we'll go with that. Rock Shadow. And he kind of glances up at you and then starts taking notes again. Uh, your rank in this army? Healer? Uh, no, you'll, you'll know that you don't have an actual rank in the army because you aren't technically a soldier. So I'll just say, uh, I'm, I'm determined, I think. <laughs> and he'll look at you again and take down another note. Um... Alright, so it says here that you came in with uh, the heroes of Trevor Craig in assistance with bringing down the barrier between Crindor and Stoka. Yes. And this is the first that you're hearing the hero's title. <laughs> so, 
since they've never really bragged about that to you. Um, yeah. And But you'll assume who that is. Um, he says, um, so what is your involvement with the war? Um, I want to help it. Help it in what way? Well, generally I'm, I'm traveling with the people that I met, the people who saved me, and I, I'm, I mostly, I'd like to continue to travel with them, and so your alliance, to heal them. Your alliance allies with the group that you came with. Yes, and their alliance lies with you, so my alliance also lies with you. Okay. Um. It says here that you were found on the stroke inside of the wa of wall very near the edge. Yes, I was held as a prisoner. All right. Why were you on that side of the wall? I was trying to find uh, my master, who we did find, and um, because I knew that he was traveling with parts of your army as a healer. So you discovered your master on the other side of the wall. Yes, he was being used as a kind of life siphon for part of the barrier. Hmm. And what did you do with your master after you found him? We took him to a temple and attempt to have him attempted to have him revived because he was dead. And um, it was unsuccessful. He wasn't we weren't able to take complete the ceremony because he woke up in such immense pain. And the name of this master of yours? Again, you can make that up. Okay, I was like, I can't remember if we came up with a name for him or <laughs> I not. Know, I don't know if he did or not. You might check your background. His name's Greg. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm looking really quick to see if I gave if I gave a name in this. Of course I didn't. Uh, it was Oriano. Yo, <laughs> it was not Oriano. <laughs> He's all gray. Oh, oh you're a... Uh... Oh, well, what now? Oh, you're a... Uh... <laughs> the boy called him Ori for you. short. <laughs> or Oyo. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you yeah, so Kevin. We're good. He will write down that name. Um, and his hometown. And you won't know that. Um, yeah, I have no idea. You will only know where he you met him. Um, so you tell him you don't know? Yes, I'll tell him that I met him when I was in grade school. Was I met him? Brussels, no, not grade school. <laughs> Esterlin. I met him in Esterlin. Okay. Uh, he will take down more notes. Um, so you were trained in the ways of healing by this man. I I kind of taught myself, but he helped me to hone the power. Right. And if this man was alive today, which side of the war would he be on? The same. I'd still be on this one. And you were sure that he was part of the Krindorian army? Yes. How do you assume that he found his way into a elemental tower on a different plane? assisting the other side of the war. 
Um, unwillingly, I would guess, he left working with Rindorian troops. So whatever happened, he had to have been separated and forced into the orb we found him in that drained his life. At no point do you think he would have volunteered for this? Definitely not. And you left on your own accord to go to Stooka and find a man that you had no idea where the whereabouts of. Yes, I have very strong ties to him. He's basically the only family that I had. And what is your reasoning for not reaching out to the army itself for assistance in this? I didn't know anybody as a background or as a drow generally were viewed with suspicion and distaste. So I'm used to working on my own as it is. Okay. He will continue scribbling down notes. That is not how you type. Um, he will nod and say, Okay, that story seems to line up with everything that we have here. Um, please note that you still have not been initiated into this army, so you will be treated as a guest. Just, um, be aware of that. You will still report to Shell as of now. There will be others that will need to discuss some things with you, but for now... Um, feel free to move, uh, head back to your friends. Um, we'll let you know if we have anything else that we need from you. And he kind of, um, opens the door and holds it open for you. Um, she'll stand up and kind of, she'll walk over her and she'll give him a big smile and she'll say, it's really nice to meet you. And then she's going to walk out. Okay. Um, and he'll also mention that you need to send back, um, Eros whenever you see him. Okay. She's gonna, like, reach out and grab his hand and shake it really vigorously. <laughs> <laughs> and he seems very uncomfortable with that. Like, he's the person that talks to people and takes notes. He doesn't interact with people socially. Uh, so he shakes your hand very awkwardly and kind of, like, lets go and moves away from you. Um, so yeah, she's you, gonna, you're... she'll, she'll wink at him before she leaves the room. <laughs> All right. Uh, so he'll just kind of like look at you with, uh, narrowed eyes and then shut the door basically in your face. I'm totally unfazed. <laughs> I'm gonna go see if I can find my friends. Okay. The, the interview, interview that, um, oh, what was his care? Um, at, uh, my draw never got. Yeah. Um, so you find Asmir and Forge outside, uh, there are more Forges, and, uh, he's basically just kind of chatting with all of them, really. Um, Asmir's kind of there just to watch, um, and Eros and Zarek are not there. So what is Forge teaching them? All right, maggots. Today is the beginning of the worst day of your life. <laughs> you there. What's your name? The ugly one. Quang. <laughs> Quang, drop and give me 20. And he okay. does so without any resistance. So yeah, that kind of thing is going on. He's trying to break them down so he can rebuild them. Yeah, totally. Uh, so as we're teaching sitting them life here watching, skills. Um, and as for as you're doing this, Oriana basically walks up to you guys. Or I run up and jump on Forge's back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> to see what he's doing. Oh. I'm like spider monkeyed on him right now. All right. This is a great time. 
for a demonstration. When someone comes at uh -oh. you from behind, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> he'll, he'll grab her arm and like flip her over in front of him and put her in a headlock. <laughs> so, you see how it's done? All right. She's <laughs> Clang, you try. <laughs> well, you should make a strength check, and she can make a dex check to see if you actually get to do that. Sure. Yes. Do a deck save. Yeah. Yeah, so he totally <laughs> does that. <laughs> Forge is strong. He is strong. If it was my strength against his, I think we'd be pretty evenly matched because I have those gauntlets of ogre power. Oh, just use your strength. Yeah, then. that's true. Do yeah, you could strength. if you want to. You can use your strength. Like, he, he pulls you over, and you're kind of not expecting that, but you can use your strength to kind of break free. Yes, embarrass him in front of his friends. <laughs> nope. I let, I let him win. <laughs> <laughs> and he's secretly grateful for that. Um. <laughs> I'll just smile and wave at everybody from the headlock. Hey! Yeah, so the other uh, Warforged will start doing basically wrestling with each other trying to do the same move um good all right so we will jump to eros and zarek what are you guys doing i want to go test out my ring okay where are you going to do this uh probably in the arena place where forge is at Uh, yeah, so you go outside and you're just gonna use one of the charges? Yep. Alright. Uh, so you use one of the charges and it creates a shadow just like you were expecting it to do. Is it bigger or smaller than I expected or do I need to roll for that? Um, I'll roll for it every time that you cast it, I'll try to remember to do that. Um, but okay. it's exactly as you expected it to be. Yes! I'm so happy I do a little <laughs> dance. In shadow. <laughs> yep. And, uh... Eris, do you have any reaction? Because Eris did not know what you guys were creating, because he didn't help in the actual making of the item. I, I look at him for a second, like, interested in what it's doing. And I'm going to try to... Because I don't know what type of magic it is. Like... Plus to digitation, send tiny little lights into it. <laughs> um, so, inside the shadow, there are tiny little fireworks. Um, but it doesn't really have any effect on it. Wait, he doesn't but... know that the fireworks isn't the flaw. <laughs> no, well, this is um, true. <laughs> okay. is it during the daytime right now? Yeah, it is. Okay, then I would do this in a room, because when I crafted, I specifically knew that direct sunlight would be dispersed sh the right. shadows. Right. Well, you, we can say that you're doing it like under a tree or something. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, as you are kind of like happy that it's working, you start seeing little like lights going off in the box of shadow. What? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I look around. Do I see certain people casting prestidigitation? <laughs> You see Arrow snickering. But he's in darkness. <laughs> no, he's I just in shadow. I see in darkness. Yeah, I'm in shadow. Yeah. yeah. It, okay, it's I not suppose. like it's not like the uh, the spell that he casts where it's like pitch black yeah. and no light can penetrate. It's just shadow, so like. Okay. I have the dim light condition on me. Yeah, it, it okay. darkens the area, but it's like you're under a tree. It's not like it's you know blackness. So this is a shadow that you can only create. Well, already in a shadow. Well, so does it actually no. do anything? It's not that. I mean, you can do it it's whenever good. there's like um, torches and whatnot. It can create a shadow that wouldn't necessarily be there. But if it's in, like, if you're in the middle of an open field and there's a giant sun above you, it's not going to be like a 10 foot square of shadow. Hmm. Yeah. So um, but it can be used to extend shadow too. So, it could help Orion out in the future. You never know. 
Yeah. I guess I've been pretty fortunate so far. Most of the battles have been inside or underground, so. Um, but yes, yeah, but so. if you ever have a battle in direct sunlight, I have disadvantage on everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you kind of assume that maybe that wasn't part of the spell. Yeah. I'm smiling innocently. <laughs> I don't believe him. You never believe Eros. Um... So, yeah, Oriana, you see Eros um, and Zarek playing with magic, basically. Um, <laughs> and you were told to send Eros to that room. Are you going to do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of slip out of Forge's headlock and run over to him and just say, Hey, I'm supposed to send you to some room. That does not... That that doesn't sound pleasant. A dark, scary room. It was fine. It was just people talking about whatever we did, I guess. I just want to talk to you. It, it, it should be okay. And for um, this kind of piques your interest because you were also in a room. Uh, I'll go willingly, but, you know, okay. nervously. <laughs> Or just too busy training. All right. Um, so yeah, you guys still don't know what happened to Forge. Um, well, they probably see him. They're like just right in the same courtyard. Yeah. Well, I just mean that they wouldn't know. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. How how the mage that question Oriana has right. all this information, um, but that's fine. Um, so Eros will go to the room, and he'll be asked to sit. And, uh, first he'll be asked, what is your name? My name is Eros Agamemnon. And I have my hand on my loot just in case, you know, stuff gets real. Okay. Uh, and he'll say, what is your hometown? Uh, my hometown is, uh, Greenleaf from the Elven provinces. Technically, um, I was born there, came here as a very young child. Okay. And what is your rank? What is my rank? Your rank is Warcaster. Uh, I am a Warcaster. Alright, so you are part of the Order. Got it. Um, can you uh, please recount the events of bringing down the wall? Um, in a quick summarized version, we went into the enemy territory. There were certain towers that seemed to power the wall. We went in. Each uh, power core, I guess you could say, was guarded by a group of elementals. We defeated the elementals, destroyed the power cores. Once we had done so, in all the towers we went to, the wall came down. And how were you able to get past the wall once it was up? Uh, past the wall? Yes. There was a cave that went underground. Did no one think of digging under the big wall? Yes, the cave penetrated the ground. Um, it says here that there was a magical presence that was blocking it in that said cave. Uh, do you know what this magical presence was? I missed that session. <laughs> um... You guys, I think you guys assumed that it was the dragon nest that you found? There was a dragon nest. Alright, and he will take notes of that. Um, and uh, did you know any of the people that were powering these towers? Again, I missed a session or two, but I don't think so. No, you didn't know any of them. Okay. Um, there was a a woman in the first one, um, Oriana's master in the second one, a drow man in the third one, and then was in the fourth one. Random dude. Yeah, I think it was just another mage. Yeah, so 
see. I'll account this. Okay. Um. And how did your team go about finding the location of these towers? I believe we had a map. Or something, right? Mm-hmm. We're not and here. <laughs> All right. Eros would remember this. I don't. Eros has a bad memory. No. Yeah. Um, and you found this map where? Um, I don't particularly remember. Uh, it was two weeks, very stressful. I was more worried about not being caught by the enemy and being killed than I was logging where we found everything we found. Hmm. And did you speak to any stroke and soldiers while you were over there? Mm, perhaps briefly while on the road. Nothing really to be concerned about. Nothing more than hello. You know, stuff they'd ex expect normal citizens to say. Okay. Um, he'll kind of nod and take a few more notes, and, uh, he'll be like, okay, um, uh, I need you to stay here for just a few moments, and I will be back. And he'll leave, and you kind of hear the door click, as if it was locked, and you are left in that room. I knew I should have fled the country. <laughs> um, alright, uh, so you guys are out... Uh, all of you guys are outside in the courtyard, um, and you guys are out there for a while. Um, Shell will approach you guys and say, um, I, Zarek, I need you to come with me, if you don't mind. What is this regarding? Uh, the tire ups need some information about your guys' adventures. Mm -hmm. You know, formalities. Oh. Yes, formalities. And I will go with her with Frostfire on my shoulder. Okay. And before you guys leave, she'll mention that, hey, you guys, your cart is still over by the stables if you need to get anything out of it. I think you guys had, like, a chest or whatever that you don't want to bring in. So just yeah, so you guys we... know, your stuff is still there. <laughs> just so you know, we didn't steal your shit. Well, I mean, you guys didn't know where everything went, so she kind of points it out. Um... All right, uh, so Shell will bring you to a different room. Um, same, I mean, it's it looks the same. It's a windowless room. There's a table um, with a man standing there. Uh, Shell will kind of say, um, come in here, sit. Yeah, you okay. can possible. Then let me get the real token. Um... And he has some scrolls mm. there in front of you. There you go. Um, and he'll look up for a second and kind of be startled. Um, and then look back down his scroll and say, uh, name? Zarek. Just, just Zarek. Zarek Stormeye. Okay. He will write that down. Um, he will say hometown. I don't have one. You have no home. Nope. He will glare at you and then um, go ahead and make a deception check. I don't have a home though. <laughs> okay. Um, and he'll say okay and write something down and then say rink. More caster. Okay. Uh, can you please recount the events of uh, the bringing down the wall? Well, it started two weeks ago where I met these group of people. Now, we came to the, and I, I try to be as long and as detailed on, like, the first day when we're getting recruited as possible. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, so you take several hours to explain every last detail of your adventure. Um, well, but I do leave out key parts of, like, when I impersonated the commander and that whole shenanigans. Or, how you got and when the I, cart. How I got the cart, how we broke into a mage's store and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Um, Very so bland. you will tell them that you guys went into town? Yeah. And that you um, basically had seen soldiers, or are you leaving out that encounter altogether? Uh, just say we saw some, like, local militia. Okay. Um, okay, so the whole time you're talking about this, he will be taking notes. Um, he'll ask you, did you know uh, these towers that you guys found... Uh, did you know any of the individuals in them? Of course not. Why'd you say it that way? Because <laughs> you're asking silly questions. <laughs> um, uh, he'll ask you, do you have any um, insight into how these towers were brought to this dimension? Uh, I might have some theories, but nothing I can prove. Please do share these theories, then. Um, well, it looks like they probably had elemental focuses from each of the planes used to pull the towers here, and then to sustain them, they probably used some high-level spellcaster and anchored it to their soul, which is why they were the source of the their core ma magical anchor and it's left to be guarded. There's nothing too fancy about that, but that's just one theory among many. Okay, and he'll take notes down. Um, you said in one of the towers that you were killed. Oh. What brought you back from that? Um, our local, my fellow party member, Oriana, by the grace of her deity, was able to give me the chance to return to this life again. And in your opinion, should she be allowed to join the war effort? Hmm. Does she want to join the war effort? If she were to want to, do you think she should be allowed to join this army? I would say that that question is, should be for the higher-ups and not someone of my lowly station, and she should be valued upon her merits. <laughs> he takes some more notes down. Uh, sir, we just want your opinion as somebody who actually knows her. Um... We need to make sure that she isn't a spy. And since you guys spent more time with her than anybody else that we know of, uh, it would be good to have your opinion on this. Mm -hmm. She's a bubbly ray of annoying sunshine. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and you see him write that word for word down in his scroll. <laughs> and he says, um, I think that is all we need from you. You can um, go ahead and head on out. Uh, please do keep a close eye on your dragon. Of don't, course. We don't I know. Want it running around. <laughs> um, and he holds the door open for you. All right. And I have Frostfire, who stayed on my shoulder the entire time and didn't do anything. <laughs> we leave. Alright. Um, and he'll mention that uh, you need to send um, one of the other people up. Um, and then they've... Asmir? Asked... Yeah, Asmir. Um, and I'll do that with him later. Uh, let me just roll for it, actually. Okay. Um, 
So Asmir will go up, and it's starting to get later in the day, and you guys have gone to lunch. Um, and Zarek kind of meets up with you guys in the lunchroom, basically. Um, and Asmir heads up after you guys have eaten lunch, and basically goes to the fabled room by now, um, and comes back down uh, where you guys are. Um, Forge, the other war Forge actually follow you to the lunchroom and kind of take cues from you. Why is there a bunch of mini Forges? This is how war Forge reproduce. <laughs> oh god. They haven't earned lunch. They haven't earned lunch. Uh, you don't even eat. Yeah, I do. And starts eating. <laughs> oh boy. Totally. It's seen. Alright, um. This is Eric really says me that he needs to go out there and he does. Um. And he comes back down kind of unfazed by the situation because it's Asmir. Um. That's all of you now. Um, and you guys didn't see Eros come down for lunch. You haven't seen him since um, he left to be questioned. Um, Eros, you're still in this room by yourself. Oh boy. He's come in. It's been a couple hours now. Actually, several hours because Zarek took so long. <laughs> Does anyone know where Eros is? Can I make an insight check to see if they, like, intend to kill me? Uh, I mean, there's nobody in the room. He's probably dead. Can I insert so him? Him? No, I sent him up to talk to that one guy. Like, at, hours ago. At this point, I'm getting suspicious, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm gonna take this table. Gonna bring it back to this corner. Oh boy. I assume it isn't bolted down. I mean, it's a really heavy table. I have hours to work with. You do. You have about four hours, so... Uh, yeah, I, I guess you scoot I, this I table. I flip it on its side and, like, start sh setting up a bunker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm building a fort. <laughs> <laughs> and All right. I crouch, yeah, basically, I build a fort and I crouch down inside of it. Okay. He's getting ready for an attack, basically. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Alright. I thought I was the untrustworthy one. No girls allowed. Um. But Asmir will say, yeah, it's kind of weird that uh, Eros isn't back yet. Uh, Alright, let's go bail him out of whatever trouble he's in. <laughs> the talker. And I... I'm gonna look for Shell. <laughs> yeah, um, you guys will find her out, always training, um, outside. Shell, uh, yes, can I help you? Um, we seem to have misplaced Eros, and we are going to be running some group tactics, and we need him. Uh, can we go get him, or can you find out where he is so we can go get him? Well, I mean... You guys sent him to be questioned? Uh, I don't know. Yes, I did. Oh. Okay. Where's well, the questioning place? I, um, if he hasn't come back for that, he's probably just not done yet. Uh, they have lots of information they need to gather from you guys. Well, I gave them plenty of information, and we kind of get antsy when one of our party members is missing, you know, this whole group together we swim or whatever that saying is and she'll kind of just be like yeah i understand that you guys are out there for a long time but you guys are back here where you're safe you're not on the other side of the wall alone anymore inside uh, check <laughs> all right <laughs> we've seen things man <laughs> <laughs> things you wouldn't believe except for zarek he saw nothing I saw everything. <laughs> um, Zarek, you kind of get, I mean, 
from that role, you kind of sense that she's telling the truth. I mean, you guys don't have anything to, like, fear here. I'm just naturally suspicious of everyone. Yeah. You are. Quit being paranoid. The hell? But I'm you don't paranoid. read anything into what she says, basically. Hmm. Um. Well, who do we talk to to find out how much longer it's going to be? Uh, I mean, it's really up to them. Who's uh, them? Usually, uh, Eros is a war caster, so he's probably being interrogated by instructors, which is the next rank up from war caster. But where's the instructor that's not currently talking to him? I want to go talk to him. Uh... I, I just, I don't think you guys should poke your nose into it. <laughs> you don't know me very well, do you? Listen, they ask you questions to make sure your guys' stories align. They want to make sure you guys didn't bring back a traitor, especially since you came back with a spare person. Uh, I mean, you guys were- I give him a big, I like, smile and wave at her at that point. Yeah. Um, obviously they believed Oriana wasn't a traitor, otherwise she wouldn't be standing here. Um, but they just want to make sure that your guys' stories are true and everything that you say line up so that you haven't come back with somebody on the other side that could be working for Stoica. You, you know, um, this, this I is know. Hard. They have to be careful. This is lunacy. What, what is lunacy? This whole thing. Uh, Forge, are you okay with having spies on our war front? We didn't bring anyone back. Well, technically, I was brought back. Well, she means... Because you found Oriana on the stoke inside of the wall, technically. And I know. she didn't go with you guys, and nobody knows who she is until she came in, so... Um... So technically, you brought me back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you basically brought her from the other side of the wall to here. Oh, yeah. I know that. Um, yeah. Can I try a persuasion roll to see if she can tell me where one of the instructors are so I can go bug him? Sure. I have advantage because of my actor feet. <laughs> okay, what are you saying? I just will... Alright, I, I understand this, but... It, you know, with... Us being a tight-knit little group, we like to just check on each other, and it has been several hours, and we're just, we want to be prepared for the worst, so if you could just point us in the direction of one of the instructors so we could put our mind at ease, I would greatly appreciate it. Woo! She'll kind of, like, look around to see if there's anybody else nearby, and she'll be like, look, I don't want a traitor in my, uh, group either. Because that would look poorly upon me. So, I I'm sure they're just, he's, you know, he tells stories. So he's probably just down there telling stories. But, I mean, you guys know where the interrogation rooms. If you want to check in on him, I'm sure it'd be fine. Uh, and she kind of tells you that there are several rooms down there. Uh, Alright. Uh, I... Just don't make a big fuss out of it. Don't okay. Don't get unwanted attention on this squadron, because I will have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. yeah. And she says that jokingly. Yeah, I shake, I shake her hand firmly, and I like, thank you, thanks for information, Shella. It really helps. And I look around everyone else and see if they're on the same page as me. Yes. Ford. Clang. What is Ford? What are you doing over there? He wanders off. Oh boy. Alright, doing let's laps. Go. Let's go, Oriana. <laughs> okay. I remember when my interrogation room was, so I'm assuming that we're gonna head in that direction. Yeah. yeah. So you guys will um head back into the barracks down to the rooms that you were sent to basically. Um, and you do find that you guys are all sent to different rooms, um, and you will see two soldiers standing at one of the doors. Hello. Uh, you, are, do you guys have an appointment down here? We 
are just looking for one of our squad members, and we were told he might be in this area. He gets he gets a little uh, lonely when he's by himself, so we just wanted to check on him. Uh, well, we were told to guard this door because the guy in there might be a potential spy. Do I hear them outside? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, no, the door that you walked through is a really thick wooden, uh, iron wooden door, so you hear, like, muffled voices, but from where you're at in the room, you don't hear anything specific. Okay, oh. uh, I'm gonna grab my longbow and, like, knock an arrow, ready to fight. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> oh, that's, that's terrible. Uh, spies are the worst. Um, do you know who's doing the interrogation? Uh, I don't know, one of the instructors, I guess. He's not in there now. Hmm. Well, could, could you describe him? I, I really... Am, could, if he's doing the next round of interviews, he might know where our squad member is. Could you describe him for me? Oh, uh, yeah, he's a man. Uh, he's got, like, brownish hair, average height... So, so you're telling me you don't know who your higher ups are, soldier? I be, there's a lot of them. It's not my fault. I was just told to stand here and make sure nobody gets in or nobody gets out. Who told you that? Uh, my commander. Who's your commander? Well, Yana's gonna walk up to the door and knock on hey, it and Oriana. say, "Hello." Oriana, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, before you're allowed to touch the door, they kind of, like, put their hands in pretty, like, no, dude, really, don't touch the door. We'll get in trouble. <laughs> I can't even touch the door? Nope. I mean, you could do something to the door. I just want to knock on it. We, we couldn't even open it if we wanted to. We don't have the keys. Oh, <sighs> uh, right. So... I got the best description. Does that match any of the instructors that I know? I There's uh, several hundred of them, so, I mean, no. All right. It's a very generic description that he gives you. You have an idea that he might be just making something up. All I right. Might well, not actually know. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Come along, Oriana. I'm going to, so while, while I'm following Zarek, I'm going to, Tell him about the guy who interviewed me, um, just to see if maybe we were interviewed by the same person. Mm -hmm, yeah, um, and you guys kind of like detail the person that you were all interviewed by, and it was the same person. Uh, Forge doesn't know. Is Forge with us, or is he still training new recruits? That's up to him. Huh? Oh. Uh, f yeah, Forge, uh, he would, he would just be with, uh, Forge would be with the other guys, uh, okay. Okay. train them. Uh, Alright. So, yeah, between you, Asmir, and Oriana, you guys kind of mention it's this, you get the idea it's the same guy that, um, questioned you guys. Alright, um, I turn to Oriana and be like... Is that why you sniff out people? Like, if she knew his scent, could she follow it? Uh... Haven't really taught her to track. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, she could, but I don't think there's any way you could convey to her, how, like, a specific person or anything like that. Yeah. She's still a little baby. Yeah. All right. Don't one of you know Draconic? <laughs> uh, no, but I've been teaching her Inferno. <laughs> yeah. I have a spell called Tongues where I can speak any language I want to. <laughs> But she's still, it's still, you're talking to a baby. Exactly, I mean, she's two weeks old. Two or three, I don't even know. Alright, I turn to Oriana and be like, alright, here's the plan. We camp out in a unnoticeable location near the front of the front door, this interrogation room, and see who goes in. If we see the guy who interrogated us, we follow. Okay, sounds good to me. So we are doing a stakeout. Okay. Did you bring sandwiches? Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I work on training, giving 
Frost Fire some new commands. Uh, so are you guys gonna return to your room? It's getting uh, it's it's getting later in the day, like uh, towards um, your third meal of the day, basically. Okay. Uh, I want to be at a place where we can view the interrogation compound. Is there a place where we can see like all a lot of the entrances? Um, I mean, there is a, a single staircase that goes down to this level, so you guys could kind of just like hang out there if you wanted to. Sure. Well, I want to hang out in a place where I can see it, but it doesn't look like I'm waiting or watching or anything, and I'll just be, like, playing with fast fire. Yeah, I mean, there's a main hall up uh, above this floor, so you guys can stay there and just kind of keep an eye on anybody that goes down the stairs from there if you want to. All right. Yes. Um. That's what I'm doing. Okay, um... So you guys will do that. Uh, Forge will get done training the Warforged. Um, and they'll kind of be sent back out to their different... They've each been assigned to different squads, basically. No. Uh, yeah. No, right. they're coming with him. He, that's his new party. <laughs> <laughs> he trained you guys in. <laughs> they have to leave the nest. Um, no, they've each been assigned to kind of like give every squad basically this boost that they know that yours have given um so they're dismissed and sent off to their to socialize basically no uh, <laughs> yes He's not he, he has to first give them their weapons oh yeah they already have weapons yeah he's gonna give them more weapons because they need more weapons um, you will be, at, well, during the day, just, uh, when you are, like, alone and training these guys, you will have a courier that brings you a letter saying that you still have an item checked out from the, uh, armory. No, he doesn't. He turned it in. <laughs> no, you, you got another hand axe. Oh, he got a, he turned it in for a right. crossbow. Yeah, you got a crossbow, yes. Yeah, he needs, he needs that. <laughs> It's just a reminder, like, yeah, he, you know. He crumbles don't it up forget. and throws it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Alright. Um, so, you guys are standing there watching the staircase, and you do notice a man starts walking downstairs. Is, does he match the description? <laughs> yeah, you guys recognize him as the man that you guys saw um, in your interrogations. Ugh. What do you think, Ariana? Hey, that's him. What? What are we doing? Uh, I think Eros is in some trouble that we're gonna have to <laughs> help him out with, but we don't know for sure. As long as he tells the truth, he'll be fine. All right. I suggest you both go to bed. Hmm. Why are you so grumpy? <laughs> well. Like I said, if, if he tells the truth, I don't know what the problem is. They're not going to do anything to us here. Well, Forge, I need to explain something to you called politics. It's the enemy of all truth. Oh, boy. Just, he might be accused of something that he never did, but because of the higher-ups have power, he might get charged for it. If they're even the slightest, <laughs> oh. I don't get it. He does right. not understand the concept yeah. of politics. Yeah, no one does. All right, can um, can I like nonchalantly just kind of start my way down the staircase? And you guys can ask Forge if he knows that man. Um, For Forge, do you know that man? <laughs> just to kind of like clarify. No. Forge. Wait, does he? No, he wouldn't know. No, um, you, so. you weren't interviewed by anybody specific. There were several mages yeah. that came in, and you didn't see any of their faces. Yeah, no one, no, no one interviewed me. I don't, I don't know. All right. How did they interview, by the way? Well, no one interviewed me. And where'd you disappear to? Well, I mean, I went and uh, they they debriefed me. Is, wait, is, uh, that, is that the same thing? Well, what happened during the debriefing? Well, they just, uh, you know, went over my uh, 
cat thinks for a minute, trying to figure out how to describe it, and he's like, uh, they just look, uh, watched everything I saw while I was gone. Wait. What? <laughs> yeah, they just, you know, they I sat on a chair, and they, uh, you know, some rope guys surrounded me, and then they, there was a sphere, and uh, we just watched everything that, everything that we saw and did while we were gone. It wasn't, it was, it was way faster. Fast motion. <laughs> but, but we Does were, that seem really weird to Zarek? Yeah, yeah, that seems very unusual and you've never heard of that before. Uh, boy. Well, that's just how they do things here. Isn't that what they did to you guys? No, Forge. No. <laughs> okay. Alright, that, that makes Zarek a little more... His suspicion level is on DEFCON 4. 4? Once. It goes from 5 to 1 with 5 being the lowest. I like it. Interesting. I start uh, making my way toward down the staircase. Like, but still trying to be nonchalant about it. Okay. Um, Eros, um, as they're doing that, uh, you see the man from earlier walk into the room. And he'll kind of be like, what the heck? Are you going to do anything? Uh, I am waiting. And I look at him, my bow, like, hidden behind the table. I got bored. <laughs> um, well, I was going to say that you were... That your story did end up checking out. Uh, but that probably don't be this suspicious. What did I do that was suspicious? I made a barricade. You were literally behind a table oh God, with an arrow pointed at an instructor. We're having a I, I did, I did say my, my bow was hidden behind the table. It's not pointing at him. Okay. Um, well, I mean... You, you just said some things that we didn't... Um, that sounded suspicious, but after checking um, our notes on the others... Recounts they panned out. Uh, uh, but we we were just checking to make sure it's, we we have this wanted poster that was found, um, and it has your description on it along with one of your other companions. Uh, what was the crime? Wanted poster. Uh, oh God! I escaped from jail. <laughs> Wait, what happened? What you <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> What do you say? I, I'd like to point out I was taken out of jail legally. Yeah. Um, Wait, did you tell them about us going to jail? No, they didn't ask. <laughs> Good. Did, did you tell them, Zarek? You didn't specify no. that you didn't. I gave them long, boring details of everything trivial, nothing important. Forge told them. Yeah, yeah oh, Forge God. did tell them. Why don't they you know? They know stuff. everything that on. Forge yeah. knew, so. Yes, but they don't know how I got out. <laughs> Listen, Guy, uh, it's been a long day. I've had to talk to all of your friends. There's been a lot of information. We were just making sure that you guys did not come back with a spy. After your story did not line up, we were uncertain of uh, your involvement in everything. Uh, especially with this wanted poster that comes in. But honestly, it's probably a good thing that you guys were wanted by the other side. That means you did something you weren't supposed to on that side. So. <laughs> Well, we were afraid this magic item guy was uh, selling to the enemy. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. So we tried to steal all this shit. <laughs> you tried to steal from a mage? <laughs> yeah. We didn't really think it through. We thought maybe there would be some, like, you know, flip a switch and the force field would turn off, but it didn't work. <laughs> uh, and he kind of laughs himself. Well, anyway, it's, it's almost summer time, and... Uh, your story ended up checking out, so you're, you're free to go. So, so you just lock me in a room for literally an entire day, and then I go free? I mean, you're not the enemy. Well, this is gonna be awkward. I say as I stand up, my longbow with an arrow knocked <laughs> coming into view. <laughs> I mean... Just watch yourself, you know? You're home now. You're not on the other side of the wall. Well, you know. Arrow says PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Like, it's okay, soldier. You're here now. You're safe for now. A single tear falls down his cheek, you know? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Again, this guy is not very social, so he kind of just, like, looks around awkwardly and continues to hold open the door, like, okay, you can go yeah. now. I-, I walk out still holding my bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. S- safe. Safe place. Um, so as you're doing that, as you're walking out, you see your friends basically come down the stairs. Part of me is tempted to do something really jerkish right now, but I'm afraid <laughs> that my, if I roll a high enough deception, they might ac- accidentally end up waging war on the army. Yeah, that was and... a Because you were just accused of being a spy and then released, so I don't think you should do anything dumb. I was going to cut my face with an arrow and tell them they tortured me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, That's yeah. That's up to I, you. I mean, you can do that. No, I'm not going to. Like I said, I don't <laughs> want them to wage war on the army because I lied. So yeah, I just walk out looking like I was... I just left a combat situation, basically. I have a bow in... I have my bow in my hand and arrow ready. <laughs> What'd you do this time? I did nothing. It was mm-hmm. a huge misunderstanding. Well, I did make I did make a barricade, and I almost shot a guy, but it, mm-hmm. it's fine. Um, I roll my eyes, turn around, and just walk back up the stairs. <laughs> See, I told you guys. I'm glad you're okay, and I'm gonna hug him really, co- like really tight, and then I hug back. Flounce up the stairs. He he silently cries just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, a single yes. man tear. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so Alan. Uh, yeah. Who's Alan? To get you caught up. Yeah, Asmir. Um, to get you caught up, basically, uh, you guys have been back uh, for the whole day. Um, you were each brought to an interrogation room, which you can see here, um, and asked to recount your whereabouts. Um of everything that has happened since you guys left Travergrig. Um, Eros was detained because his story didn't seem... His story seemed suspicious, but he didn't lie. Uh, um, Did we get promotions? Amazing. (laughs) Yeah, Forge is waiting for his promotion. Yeah, I died. Um... (laughs) You guys can get another medal if you want. No, he should be like the, I mean. the, the leader of the Warforge b- b- battalion thing. Um, but anyway, so you guys, uh, Eros has basically been in interrogation all day, which you guys found suspicious after he was basically chained there while you and Zarek were questioned, and Zarek took a long time to be questioned. Um, and you guys didn't hear back from him, and as you guys were walking downstairs, he was being released, saying that his story lined up. Um, and Forge didn't actually have an interview, they just kind of, like, downloaded his memories. Which Zarek is not okay with. <laughs> yeah, um, which actually worked out in the end, so... Um, you guys are actually, it's, uh, summer time now, um, and you guys have all had a long day of interviewing. I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a bad day for me. I used it to really have bardic has. Insp- it, I used to have all, all my bardic inspiration, and then I was basically sent to solitary confinement for, like, 12 hours. You were in there for, like, 4 hours. You said it was all day. I went there in the morning. Well, I mean, you went there after Forge and after Oriana... Forge was there before we even woke up. It's true. So I guess everyone goes to sleep or to trance or to yep. power down. Um. Uh, so you guys will head back to your room in the barracks. Um, Shell will uh, say, um, Oriana, we actually uh, we found a room that you guys you can stay in. Um, until you're, you know, it's an official thing that you're part of this squadron. I mean, we're already at 10, but um, you can stay in one of the guest rooms until we get all the papers through and whatnot. 
Okay. <laughs> Take away uh, from my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll show you where those guest rooms are. Um, they're they're at like the entrance of the barracks, uh, not on the main level, but towards the main hallway, basically. Um, and you're basically shown. It's a nice room. It's where a lot of the um, really high-ranked officials stay whenever they're in the fort, um, and like emissaries and um, polit- politicians and whatnot. Um, so it, it's a pretty nice room, and um, you're you're brought there to stay there for the night. Um, Is this my room for keeps? (laughs) You're still in your barracks room. Barracks room. Yeah, it basically it's a room that holds, you know, ten soldiers. Oh, all the warforged. It's like bunk beds and whatnot. No, there's no (laughs) more warforged in here. (laughs) What? Do do they anybody our squads? Did anybody else in our party see me taken away, or am I just kind of on my own now? Yeah, I mean, she walked into the room while you guys were basically getting ready for the night and mentioned this. Alright, we'll just head into this room then and hang out. Okay. Trance, or what have you. Um... Hold on one second... Really, Forge? Metallica. What's wrong with Metallica? He, he's metal. And wood. <laughs> but he's, he's metal. To his very soul. Oh, God. Alright, so we all go and power down. Go to it. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't have time. Yeah, and so you guys wake up the next day. Um, it's more of a formal day. You guys are brought out to do training. Um, Forge is also instructed to continue. Um, not necessarily train with the other soldiers, but you're giving time basically to teach them like social norms and whatnot because... They are essentially one-year-olds. <laughs> not even. Uh, no, not even. You're right. They're essentially infants. Um, and basically, you're given like a few hours every day with them to teach them stuff that you've learned on your journey, basically. Because you're seen as some uh, Warforged that is integrated so well into a group. Um, so you're seen as like a huge success. Oh, God. Yeah. Um... And nothing else eventful really happens um, today. It's just um, normal training and whatnot. Um, and Orion is kind of seen as like an eleventh member of your guys' squad uh, for now. I'm assuming they have some sort of religious place where you can go to see the different deities. Yeah, there there is a temple in uh, the fort. Zex gonna go there. Okay. Yeah, and it's um similar to the last temple that you guys had seen in Traver Craig, where it had um the little like spots for each shrine. Um, but there's way more. There's every single deity here. Um, so right. you kind of find your own space to do. Yeah, can I find my deity and see if anything happens? Yeah, sure. Um, so you meditate, um, and you have, again, uh, more visions that come to you, um, from when you had died and you were on the other side. Uh, you remember, uh, going to the Raven Queen and her telling you that it wasn't the war wasn't over and it wasn't she still needed your hand in the war essentially okay. um, the Raven Queen. but you don't get anything more out of it alright I am also going to go and spend some time in the religious hub 
with my deity. What is your deity? Lyra. What? Lyra, the goddess of joy. <laughs> it would be. Oh god. I know, right? Are we, are we in the Forgotten Realms? I'm taking the deities from that just because it's easier than making up a whole thing of it. Pantheon. Yeah, that thing in the box. Alright. Okay. Let's go kill some shit. Yeah. Okay. When's our next mission? You guys have not been given one yet. Basically. I'm gonna go find Shell and make her give us one. <laughs> um, okay, make so you, her? Yeah, you find Shell and what are you gonna say? Shell. Yeah. We're antsy. What have you got for us? Oh gosh. What do you mean? I mean, there's obviously something we can go do. Recon, capture another town, try to get rid of one of the enemy's political leaders or commanders. Come on. <laughs> Assassinate I know. Mr. Oka. <laughs> Funny. Uh, I know you guys have been on your own for a while, but this is still, you know, an army. We don't just send out a few people to do things. Uh, I mean, we're currently waiting. The High Commander Magister and uh, the War Council are traveling back from Traver Craig um, with the new troops. So we're currently kind of waiting for that. Once the Council meets... We'll have more information on the next steps of this war. Alright, I'll wait. And he just sits down right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, for, for, it's, it's gonna take, like, a week. But, uh, actually, Forge, we do have some new war Forge that are supposed to be here tomorrow, so... More? How many? Uh, another, another five, hopefully. Wow. Yeah, they, they've been churning them out lately. Um, we've gotten word that there might be some on the other side, too, so... I'm trying to keep it balanced, you know? Wait, what? More what? What do you mean? More on the other side of what? Not all forges are good forge. Yeah, there are war forged on the other side of the war. What? It seems that um, they found out about it. Uh, it was this thing that they had made at Udotrin, and I'm not really sure how the Stoke inside had heard about it, but somehow it's gotten back to um, the High Ruler, and they're making Warforged of their own. It's an arms race. Essentially, again. I need more arms. No. If we implant extra arms on Forge, can they get more attacks per turn? <laughs> you do not know. But no, that would be ridiculous. Alright, well, I say we wait for this council to meet. Uh, yeah, so, um, the next day more Warforged come in, and you're given the same thing with them. Uh, told them to, or, you're told to help them learn, like, social norms and stuff like that. Um, he does and not. He does not teach them social norms? No, he just fights them. <laughs> okay. They learn from you that fighting is everything. Um... And there are no more, like, repercussions or anything from your, um, time away from the fort. It is, um, you guys, uh, throughout the days, you guys, um, kind of pick up that the rest of the fort, like, almost everybody in the fort knows exactly who you guys are, and that you were the ones to bring down the walls, so you get a lot of recognition from that. We're rock stars. Um, they are hosting it. concerts. <laughs> and that you also were the ones that, you know, kind of initiated the wall since you saved Trevor Craig. Um, and you hear stories that people are moving back into Trevor Craig and it's becoming a real town again. Um, 
like I said, I search and charge like five copper admission. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a total success. You have your own little like. I mean, there's not really like a convention room or anything, so you do this kind of in the lunchroom in between meals or whatever. Oh, yeah. At what point? <laughs> Can tell us? Go ahead. No, go ahead. How much do I make? Uh, you'll make like one gold a day. Awesome. How many days can I do this? Uh, yeah, how long are we staying here? Um, basically, it'll be another five days. After gotcha. This. Yeah. So can after I be days, taking Frostfire out of the fort and training her away mm -hmm. from people for those yeah, five days? Yeah. There's a have, there's a forest kind of surrounding the fort, so you can definitely do it anywhere out there. That's fine. Okay. Do they know that we have a dragon now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you guys <laughs> have been. Day. Yeah, he, you guys have been walking around with the dragon openly, um, and they know how you got the dragon and everything. You were kind of questioned about it, so. Um, is there a blacksmith? There's. There is. Right. Yeah. All right. He's gonna go see the blacksmith. I guess you guys want a map, huh? Yes. Yeah. So do I need to roll yeah. animal handling? Hmm. Animal handling? Yeah. 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 I want to train the. Do I get advantage? You can go ahead and do seven. That's how many days you guys will be here before the uh, council gets here. So you can go ahead and roll seven. Uh. Advantage. Some sort because of, she's now like starting to trust me, and so it's easier to train her. No, that would be no fun for me. Oh, <laughs> well, I just my animal handle is one, so I need all the help I can get. I mean, your friends can help you. Yeah, I want to help him with this. Yes. All right. Yes! Nice. Dang. Two nat 20s. Um. Yeah, so it's five successes. Uh, so you can teach her two more commands? Do my nat 20s give me anything special? Um, no, but I will say that overall, um, she becomes easier to handle that. Yay! Alright, um, I'll think of them while you do other people. Okay. Um, is there anything else you guys want to do during this week? Yeah. I want the blacksmith to make me custom plate mail armor. Oh, yay. Don't you have magic armor? Yeah, but I was, no, gonna, I was gonna give that to uh, Oriana. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, let me look at the price of that. It's like 1500 I think. Okay, you guys want to spend your money on it? I'm fine with keeping our healer alive. <laughs> Um, do, 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 do. I died pretty fast last time, guys. <laughs> That's because you didn't have a shield. Yes, well, also because I was running about through the elementals instead of around them. <laughs> this is true. Um. Oh yeah, Kelsey, you said that there's a magic workshop and they were making stuff. Can I go see what they have to if there's anything that they'd be willing to sell? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not really a shop, it's just people making stuff for themselves. Um, but yeah, nobody yeah. stops you from going in there. Because, I mean, I'm as you know, mages like to show off stuff that they make. Um, yes. So Do they I see have no anything problem. of interest that I might like? Unless he tries to stop me, I'm going to go with him. Yeah, that's I'm fine good. with it. Uh, Forge, you wanted plate mail? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's actually gonna be more expensive than usual. Um, 
So it'll be 2,250 gold. Oh, shit. Fuck that. Um, and that that's just because, you know, high demand. Um, okay. So you're not going to get it made? No. Okay. It's too much. Um, uh, yeah, so you guys go to the magic lab or whatever we're calling it. I'm, I'm going to keep calling it that because I like it. Um, okay. you guys go there and there's, I mean, there's a lot of people that are just like reading, um, or creating scrolls to be used. Um, there's a, a few people that are experimenting with items, um, some of them are trying to make special wands that do different things, or um, enchant armor, or rings, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, have, well, like, during this week, have I been seeing if Fresh Fry has been dropping any, like, scales or anything that I might use for bargaining <laughs> power with them? Um, it, I will say that she's shut a couple of scales just from training. Okay. Alright. Um, I catch the eye of someone who just looks more bored than the others. Okay. And I kind of gesture him over. Alright. So Alright, um... Yeah? I was wondering if you could help me with an item. Okay. And I pull out the Sword of Vengeance and say, See, we came across this magically enchanted sword, but unfortunately there's a curse on it. Who would I need to talk to to see about, see if we can get the curse part of it lifted? Talk to Oriana. <laughs> well, you'll need somebody that can cast, uh, I think it's Greater Restoration. Oriana can totally do that. Um, All right. Or cast banishment on it, or something like that. Does anyone here know banishment? Uh, I mean, there's a third level cleric spell called Remove Curse, which is specifically for this. Oriana, do you have that? Yeah, she has it all. I have all the things. All right. All right, never mind. I have that taken care of. I just realized. Ha ha ha. Um, I don't know if remove curse. <laughs> that would work on the person that's cursed by it, it, the weapon. It's specifically for that. It, it, well, if you look at the item itself, to get rid of the spirit that's um in the sword, it would have to be banishment. Oh. Well, it says you can break the curse in the usual ways too. Right. That would be the curse on the person. No, oh. it's, um, well, I mean, the usual way is you... Here, it's right, I just put yeah. it up, if you want to look at it. It's on the chat. It says you use it to remove curse from item. Or object, but it's, it just says that if an object is a cursed magic item, its curse remains, but the spell breaks its owner's attunement to the object. Right. So what I'm saying but is... In other words, it can't break the curse on the object, oh, but it can break yeah. the curse the only, from the being attached way. to a specific person. Exactly. The only way to get rid of oh. the curse that's on the actual weapon is to use banishment. Remove curse will help you guys if you start using the sword, but uh. since nobody has actually touched the sword, nobody's cursed. Oh, I thought it removed the curse from the item. That's my bad. No, Alright, um, never mind. I just, haha, I changed my mind again. Does anyone here know banishment? <laughs> um, yes. <sighs> I think, what level of spell is that? see that's a fourth level is there anyone around that's of like the rank higher than us oh yeah I'm gonna go to them and I'm gonna ask them what they had to do to get promoted cause we <laughs> just fucking saved the war effort <laughs> um whose dick do I have to suck for promotion <laughs> cleric paladin sorcerer were like um just put a class in Paladin, and you'll be rank, high rank. Technically, I guess you guys are you guys. Can, you can guys can do fourth level spells, can't you? No. no, no. Okay. I mean, 
Uh, uh, us. I think I'm level, level, us, level seven. Get next level. Yeah. yeah. Um. So everybody level up. <laughs> level up for doing nothing. We'll just hold on to it till we hit seven, and then we can remove it. I guess. Yeah, you could do that. Um. All right. Let me see what a level spell would be. Um. Yeah, there there are several individuals that could cast cast a banishment. Um, it it would cost money, obviously, to have them do this. I show one of the three dragon scales and be like, "Would this suffice as payment?" So I was just looking at this, how much that would be. Um. Uh, he looks at it and says, mm, it's not like a full grown dragon, so maybe like this and like a couple hundred gold? Yeah. Okay. So I give him 120 gold in a scale and ha ask him to have it banished by the next day, and I leave the sword with him after I get his name and rank. <laughs> I mean, he can cast it right then. It doesn't take long to cast it. Well, if he fails, he's going to have to keep doing it. Yeah. This is true. Yeah, this is true. Uh, actually, um... I don't think there's any way, because it would have to succeed on a charisma saving throw, which it can't do. Okay. Let me just roll for this. He'll, he'll attempt it right then and there as you hand over the stuff, and he will fail because <laughs> real poorly. Oh no, no, he'll succeed. Okay. All right. Um, and he'll be like, "It's already done." Thank you. Have a good day. Problem. And I leave. Problem. <laughs> uh, I want. Uh, can you guys? Uh, one of you guys uh, make me a shield. And that's just a plus one sword now. Okay. Oh, I want a shield. Want a shield? Yeah. Are you gonna buy a shield or? Uh, he oh, demands a shield. I got this metal shield here. It shows it. Huh? Oh, you're showing it to the mages? I want. I want. I want mag magnetized. Magnetized? Yeah. It's not gonna fuck with your view. Thing. Yeah, oh. he wants it to stick to him. Is what he's trying to say. Uh, yeah, basically uh, what he wants, and I don't know how to ask this. He wants he wants a shield that that's magnetic and it just sticks to him, so that he can like equip it as a bonus action. Um, because it just sticks to him. He doesn't have to you know do anything. And also he wants to be able to throw it and have it return to him. He's he wants to be captain. captain he's though. gonna be exactly. captain Prindor. Oh God. Um. <laughs> Just like a D8. That's less than his crossbow. Oh, gosh. Why do you have to drop this stuff on me before I ask you about it? Um, there's no way... There's, like, no precursor for magnetization. So, I don't think that will be possible just because the technology... Has I'll just been sit here. I'll sit here in this chair and you can attune it to me. And then... It'll, oh, God. It'll, it'll just snap on. It's really easy. Well... Snaps what? on and yeah. never comes off ever again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kelsey, what yeah. if they did it so the back of the shield is enchanted with a thorn whip, so he hits it and then it wraps around his arm? I mean, we you could easily put straps on it. Oh, I want it to be equipped as a bonus action. I see what you're saying. Just pop it on. Um, it snaps on. That. Um... Badum, 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 badum. I want to throw it and have it come back. There is a shield that does something like that. Hmm. Sorry, I don't mean to. I don't like to usually take up people's time like this, but I want it! <laughs> I think it's cool. Uh, Sentinel shield? What does that one do?
Yeah, this is why I kept saying, I don't know if I'll be prepared for this session, because it'll be a session where you guys just throw stuff at me. Um... That's dumb. Uh, it's kind of like a... Yeah, I'm trying to find a shield that would be kind of similar to that to see if well, we can get... It's kind of like an animated shield, but not as good. What if you took the property of a dancing sword and put it to a shield? Dancing sword, do you? Yeah, that's true. Dancing sword is like, uh... Yeah, it's basically what it is. and Except when he's wearing it, it's AC stuff. Okay. Um... It will take some money. Yeah, the dancing sword by itself is 2,000. So you're gonna have to hire a mage to actually try to craft, because nobody has... I mean, there's... Nobody has the formula for a dancing sword or a dancing shield. Um, oh, you got a week. So... It's gonna take a lot to make the item. So you gave them a shield. <laughs> it would be like 25,000 gold to make the item. Okay. Sell the dragon. So, <laughs> 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 I like the way you think. So I, I don't, I, it would have to be something that... Um, Just throwing it. It's not even a dancing sword. It doesn't even, it's not even as good as a dancing sword. Well, a dancing sword is very rare. Yeah, it's not that good. So making a very rare item is... It's not It's not, it's not. Yeah. as good as a dancing sword. Are there mage users here? Or magic users? Or so many of those? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, can Even... we get those gems appraised? Those crazy ones that we found in the thingy? The black, the green, oh, red? Yeah, from the elementals. Yeah. Elemental gems? Oh, the large ones? Yeah. That you dug out? Um... Can't touch them back, let's get out of here. <laughs> there's Wanna not, make like, armor out of them? Well, they're not big enough for armor. I mean, they, they're big enough yeah. that you have to use two hands to, like, hold them. But, like, in the palms of your hand. Does that make sense? Are they... They're, like, six inches by six inches. Um... Oh, pretty big. Holy shit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they're worth quite a bit. Uh, let's see. Where are my prices? <laughs> I would say that these gems. Um, just from what you know, because you have a background in jewelry and gemstones, um, you could probably get 5,000 gold. Each? Yeah. I mean, get out of here, guys. These are mine. They're not being sold. They're being used. <laughs> uh, put these in my armor. Did you, uh, but did, you, can you guys always... take Chris's sword out of the bag? I oh, yeah. got it disenchanted. So now yeah, it's just it's a plus just one sword. sword. Yeah, it's just a plus one sword. Whoever has that. Oh, yeah. the magic butter knife. What does that do? <laughs> okay, the story of the magic butter knife is it's just a magic... It was just a butter knife that happened to be in a magical I, tower. I gift it to our general. Oh. This is for you? <laughs> she looks at you like, why do you guys have a butter knife? It's uh, magic. You're welcome. Okay. It spreads butter really good. <laughs> it actually does. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, thanks. And like on the side of it, it says, we went to the elemental plane and all we got was this butter knife. Oh god. <laughs> Alright. There are no guns in this campaign. Dang, I tried. Did anybody what? take something <laughs> earthbind scroll? What? For once, an earthbind scroll, apparently. We have a scroll of earthbind. 
well, it's not really useful to any of us at the moment unless uh, the dragon gets out of control. Okay, well, uh, she would it's, never. It's Aaron's <laughs> now. Aaron, put She's scroll of earthbound near thing. Okay. Pretty well trained. <sighs> yeah, and you guys can sell anything that you guys want while you're here. Oh, could I see if I could get that an... bullet hide turned into leather armor of a yeah. better nature? Just... Yeah, leather... um, I would say anything made out of that would be like a plus one armor. Um, okay. So yeah, yeah, you guys can make, um, did you guys skin both of them? You just skinned one, right? Oh, I have five yards of the bullet hide. Okay. Um, so that should be enough to make two sets of armor, I would say. Um, okay. Kind of to be up. Um, and that will be... Let me see what kind of armor that will be. Just to get the specifics out here. Um, that would be considered... I think scale man... No, it wouldn't be scale. What? That bullet hide that you guys found, what would that be considered? It's definitely got to be like... Yeah. Studded leather? Hide? Yeah. It's chitin, it, isn't it? It's more than hide, I would say. Well, it would be hide, but it might be stronger than normal hide, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would consider it studded leather, plus one studded leather. Is, is there anyone in the party that uses studded leather? I do. Is there anyone other than me and him? I could. Do you want to wear studded leather armor? It probably... It, I lose one AC, but I don't get penalties to stealth, so probably. Well, it gives it's a, a plus one. Yeah, it's oh, a plus it's a plus one, one then, yeah. It'll be 17 without uh, penalties then. Okay, and do you guys want to sell your old armor? Sure. Yes, what's scale now worth? 45? That's 45 pounds. Uh, probably cheap as hell. What is it? Scale mail? Um, for scale mail, they'll give you uh, 50 gold. What about for studded leather armor? 45. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll sell my thing. Because then they can still get a profit. Okay. Anything else? Um, Forge, do you want to empty out your inventory? Mm. <laughs> no. Oh, I wanted a hand crossbow. Can I get a hand crossbow? Mm -hmm. um. Eros is going to stand up in, like, he's still in the, um, the room with all the mages going to say in a rather loud voice, if anyone can think of a good magic item for a bird, please step forward. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um, oh, I have this magic flute, little like boy! Yeah. <laughs> there aren't actually any bards in here. Um, a hand crossbow is going to be 113. Okay. Uh, Alright. Magic items for bards. No, everybody kind of just looks at you and chuckles. Um... But nobody really says anything. Oh. Oh, the answer God. is because there is one set of magic items that are good for bards, and they literally just let you cast more spells. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can ask about for an iron stone or something, or uh, something of spell storing, or <laughs> somebody's like, you could make a scroll. Um, I would like to draw my longbow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing specific. If you want to find something specific to make, you can think of it. I, I've looked at this literally, like, <laughs> nothing within my price range I want. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. All the um, really go find more dragons. Yeah, all the really good Sell ones or bard stuff is, like, very rare. You guys do have a dragon. No, you guys sold the dragon. Don't that's sell right. him. Never mind. Sold you sold the dragon for yeah. super cheap. 
I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. You guys weren't there. Azmir had uh, the best bargains ever, so... <laughs> I forgot about that. Forge is gonna give these mages the middle finger, and he's gonna go to the blacksmith. <laughs> what? <laughs> it doesn't phase them. Um, 25,000. What do you want at the blacksmith? Here's his metal shield. Here's my mm -hmm. arm. Make it to where these two can connect super <laughs> quick. Um, okay. Uh, he'll charge you, like, 20 gold and he'll put um like some like straps on it but they're like quick release straps like there's a way that you can just like kind of tug on the strap and it lets the shield free basically oh damn all right i'll, I'll take two of those two shields with that yeah okay you gotta put one on each arm <laughs> no he's gonna give one to oriana because that's super good yeah oh. <laughs> That's smart, yeah. I like it. And he will be throwing this, and it will be returning. Oh, God. Returning? <laughs> Don't worry about it. it. It's not a boomerang. You can throw it, definitely, but it's not going to return. I'll just do the hand axe, like, damage, and it'll be fine. Shield of returning. Just for flavor. Yeah. Um, You're going to have to go pick it up, though. <laughs> yeah, he'll go pick it up, kind of. Or you yeah, can put a chain on it. Oh, my God. So I'll say if you guys wanted to, for some reason, you could, uh, as a bonus action, remove the shield and toss it at some, or throw it at something, and do some damage, um, but you'll lose the AC from it. Right. Okay. Anything else you guys want to do during this week? Yes, sleep so we can go adventure. Yep. Okay, uh, so you guys kind of wait. It's kind of really dull after being out in the field for so long to be back in the barracks um, in the normal... I guess this is what normal soldiers do every day. Kind this of is boring. <laughs> Don't kill stuff. Um, no. Oh my god. <gasps> Lily. <laughs> Shut up. Um... But yeah, you guys, you kind of, you're, it's a mundane thing to be like, you wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, you go do training all day, and then go to bed, basically. Um, yeah. One of them. Oh, and uh, Kelsey, for my two commands, I'm teaching Fast Fire. The first one is KO, which means to knock out, but not kill. Okay. And I'm still thinking of the other one. Okay. KO, uh, eat. What are, oh, I'm going to write these down, or I will never remember them all. I'm writing down the commands. How about track? Are you putting it on his... You guys have taught him attack, hide, protect, and KO. How about track? Uh, I don't think can dragons can fly. Dragons can fly. I mean, can he fly? Or she? She Can she fly? Yeah, she can fly 60 feet. Yeah, she has all the normal... She tried to scout. Of a wormling. And, and oh. stealth. <laughs> Stealth might not be a bad one. Well, she can already stealth, but I can teach that as the last command. So I'm putting the commands in her bio and info. Alright. Kelsey went to check on the dogs. I'll take over for a minute. What do you guys want? Everything. <gasps> I want gems. I want more gems. Give me more gems. Okay. Um, you, you just, you're you walking DC. down the road, and you find a little box. Trip over it. Open it up, and there's, oh, yeah. there's 100 gems in there worth 1,000 gold each. <gasps> oh, this is all getting put in my armor. Can I get a, a, a war mage plus three wand? Yeah, it's in the box. Can I get a scroll of, of, of wish spell? In the box. Uh -huh. <laughs> fucking weapon. It's all in the box. Can we make a wish? Yeah, a wish. <laughs> Apparently, we found a wish scroll Nothing while you were this. gone. None of this happened. No. Uh, <laughs> retcon. Retcon. Whatever I said while I was gone, that did not happen. Um. Okay. So, after on the seventh day, um, we rest. Totally. <laughs> Uh, you guys are totally bored by now, uh, but halfway through the day, there's like, uh, you hear like, 
trumpets going off at the gate. Um, and there's this big to-do, like, there's a big party at the gate of the fort. Um. Um. And you see, like, um, the higher-ranking officials. You guys kind of recognize the high uh, commander and high magister from in Traver, Traver Craig. Um, uh, behind them, you also see a bunch of elven soldiers um, of different specialties. Um, and you also see other people on horses that seem that they're really important, and they all head toward the barracks. That's kind of like the interesting that thing that happens. Um, the next day, you guys are actually called in, and you find um, th it's this big open room where there's a giant round table in the middle, and there is um, five old, like they're almost ancient-looking elves, but it's really hard to tell because they're still really beautiful. Like you've seen older elves, but these seem like they've been. Yeah, almost. Um, but you can tell just from the look in their eye that they're the oldest elves you've ever, you know, met. Uh, there's five of them there. Um, and then you also see the High Commander, the High Magister, and some of the War Council um, sitting there. And they ask you to sit. Um, the High Commander stands. Can I lean against the wall instead? You good? I'd do that. Right. You're such um, a bad boy. Forge pulls you into the chair next to him. Save <laughs> like, oh, your seat, Zerk. No. Disrespect. Uh, Are you gonna fight, Forge? <laughs> no, because it's in front of commanders. Funny. Um, he will say, uh, thank you all for um, attending this meeting today. As you know. We have reached a very pivotal point in this war effort. Hopefully, it's the point that kind of turns it around for us. Today, we are joined with the soldiers from Elethir. We now officially have their uh, army on our side to help with the war against Stoka. You guys are so distracting. <laughs> um... And he says each of their names, and um, they're basically the uh, uh, rulers of Elethir, and seen as like the nobles from there. Uh, we also have with us the War Council, and myself and the High Magister. Today we are going to plan out our next steps in this war. We have also invited... Um, the people who have given us this pivotal point in this war, um, the heroes of Traver Craig, as they're called, um, as they have brought down the wall and severed the links to the elemental planes that Stoga set up. Um, I think without this step, um, I don't think Elethir would be on our side of this war, but after those heinous crimes, <laughs> It seems that the rest of the world is starting to notice the war in the north. So, uh, today we're going to discuss um, what we should be doing next. Uh, I know that you guys were recently on the other side of the war. We haven't seen any troop movements on the border, which is curious. So I'm kind of curious to hear if you guys have seen any troop movements while being on... Uh, um, Stoke and Land. I know you guys were in a town there. Um, is there any information that you can give to help out with this? Uh, Sarah doesn't say anything. He just looks at everyone else. Ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> I shoot the high command. <laughs> we Treason! Got uh, Treason! Yeah, Forge will stand up and he'll head up. To the front of the room and like kneel before the peoples. That okay. <laughs> uh, Very like he's waiting for something. What are you waiting? He'll say, "Uh, are are you okay?" 
Oh, I thought I was about <laughs> to be promoted. <laughs> Is that not oh what's happening? Oh my gosh, awkward. Uh, do you guys, I mean, one of you aren't even a soldier for one. So you guys aren't really in the traditional ranking. Uh, um, Mercenaries got up. Uh, we've kind of written you off as a, um... Oh, we're special, special like, covert, covert arts, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah we're special that force um, that we are definitely lucky to have. Uh, but anyway, back to the situation at hand. Um, do you have any information on troop movements of Stoke soldiers? Do we? Um, Wouldn't I have seen something when I was pretending to be the commander in, in his tent? Yeah, you guys saw several... Um, troops that seem to be moving towards the border even before you brought down the wall. Um, you saw a few uh, regiments. Remember you saw a group of like 50 soldiers and then you saw the smaller groups of like 10, 20 soldiers. Um, one of which you stole the cart from. Um, and you also saw when you were in what's the town? Uh, when you were in New Bern you also saw that there was, um, near the barracks, there was several, like, tents set up for more soldiers, and there was a very heavy, like, um, military presence there. Alright, uh, forwards will relay, relay that. Hmm. Um, are you gonna tell them you stole a cart from one of them? Oh, well, oh, hey. Jesus Christ. No! <laughs> what? <laughs> Really? No. Yeah, he'll tell him all the stuff. He'll tell him okay. what? Okay. No. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you kind of detail your guys' time in Newburn and everything like that, um, and your interactions with different troops, um, and how, um. Oh my God. Anyway. Uh, and all that, what was I saying? Um, he'll say, um, that's very unfortunate news to see, to hear that they were amassing towards the border before the wall even came down. Um, and I suppose you guys don't have any information after the wall came down. Uh, nope. Um, we haven't seen any movement over the border yet. I mean, we have troops stationed everywhere. Um, but it seems odd. It seems like they're waiting for something. It's been a good week now, and we still haven't seen or heard anything. Um, just peculiar, definitely. But I think we should move, um move in on their territory and do what they did to us and start taking towns uh, and you guys can see a map in the table in front of you um, and he'll kind of move some stuff on the table and he'll say I think our first option is to take New Bern uh, this town although not very large is one of the main uh, farming villages and has a direct line to the capital now if we can take newborn and position troops there and attack from there we could uh, also send off some forces to what a memory um, we could also send forces up to Hallgren um, and see if we can make contact there they haven't joined the stoke inside yet so there is hope that Maybe the dwarves could be on our side. And as he says this, one of the el el elderly elven people will say, We don't need dwarves to fight this war. Um, and he'll kind of say, I, I understand you guys don't have the best relationship with the dwarven kind, but I don't think it would hurt us to have more allies in this war. Uh... If we can have them, it'll be great help. If not, just preventing them from joining the Stogan side might be helpful. I don't think we should send a 
full force of soldiers there because that might be seen as an attack and I don't want them on Stoga's side. That They would be a tremendous ally to Stoga. So, it might be worth sending in our special forces here to Hallgren to see if they can convince them to join. Do you think Show that is something... <laughs> Do you think that is something that you guys could possibly do? I think that's a waste of our talents. Um, the High Magister will kind of pipe in and agree with you. Um, he'll say, I mean, we could have you guys just at the front lines with us as we go into Newburn. Since, I mean, you guys know the layout and everything. Um, yeah. That'd, that'd be best. And he'll go and he'll okay. find, like, a like an empty chair, like, up on the, you know, where all these higher-ups are sitting, and he'll just, like, sit amongst them. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of them are standing now, because they're kind of all looking at the map and moving things around as oh, they discuss it. Oh, yeah, I'll just stand next to them. Uh, and they're kind of all discussing, like, plans for invasion basically, and how they're going to move troops into Stoica safely and try to take over Newburn is the idea. Um, the only thing they're worried about is troops coming in, because from Newburn, it seems that troops would be able to come in from Saltwallow Salt and Boulder and um, from the coast, um, which seems kind of risky. Um, so they start discussing plans on maybe splitting the force of the army and sending them to both towns and possibly taking them both. Um, do you guys have anything to say about this? Feel uh, free to pipe in at any time. Uh, um. Uh. Yes. Arrows is uh, just like fiddling with his arrows. You guys are such great soldiers. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're we do what we're told. Yeah. Who's the face of the group? You can, you can send us Arrow. to take care of something. We can go off the, on our own. The high commander seems to um, be kind of like leading this meeting, um, but I mean they all talk. Um, Zerkap. Types of me like um. Do you know if there like are any ancient legends of relics or weapons that might help the war effort that you could send us after? Um. No. And he kind of looks at the high magister. Is like, hmm. I. I mean, I'm sure there are ancient things, but it doesn't seem like anything that could help us right now. <clears throat> you want to show us the uh? The area map of uh Stoke. Yes, yeah, so we can get an idea of what's going on here. Yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. So basically they're going to what they're saying is they're trying to decide um between just sending everybody to Newburn, taking that over, and then having a straight line to the capital of Stoga, or splitting the troops and sending um some of them to Saltwell and also take that off to kinda head off any troops that they would send through there. Um, and they're also discussing plans to maybe get the dwarves from Hallgron, which have not joined Stoka. They're kind of their own offshoot. Um, trying to get them to join the uh, Krindor side. Alright. Here's what you do. No. <laughs> you, send, you send us with maybe a small uh, group of men. To your squad? Yes. And we'll take New burn. You send them the rest of the force <laughs> to Salt Wallow. And then uh, we'll leave some men in Newborn and then we'll head to Hallgrun afterwards. I. So you're. Um, from your account, they have been amassing troops in Newborn. You're saying that you would be. Dumb enough to walk in there by your guys, yourself and try to take the whole thing. I said send some men with us. <laughs> Are you hard at hearing, old man? Oh, sorry. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Please forgive my insolence. 
I mean, I think Solo is kind of the offshoot. That's where they're not expecting anything. So it might be in our favor to send our special forces there while we take Newborn kind of a two-headed attack. Um, and uh, that's the high commander saying that. The uh, Magister will say, I, I, I don't know if it's smart to split the troops. Um, Fine, we'll go to Salt Wallow then. Um, what so if we just have a bunch of mages cast fear and walk towards them slowly? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to Salt Wallow and send the bulk of the force to Newburn. Uh, they do have mages on their side of the war, too. Don't forget that. And Warforged. Oh. Yes, they do Very have Warforged. dangerous enemies, indeed. So, as we are attacking with all of our forces at New Bern, you guys go and infiltrate Salt Wallow and try to cut off that supply line. I mean, it could work. Alright, so, we'll leave immediately. Um, how will you notify us once you're done with Soul Hollow? We could light the town on fire. Uh, or we could have one of the mages craft us a sending scroll. Let it be, be known that stuff? when we take over these towns, we don't kill civilians. Well, I never said we'd kill the civilians. <laughs> you just said burn down the town. <laughs> I never said we were going to burn down the civilians. Listen, this war is not, not, war is not the people's fault. It's not the people who live in these towns' fault that their ruler is evil. Uh, it's just those that have joined the war that we need to worry about. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if you have your mages craft us a sending scroll, as soon as it's done, we can send you a message. Uh, yeah. Um... We'll do that both ways, uh, too. That way, you guys can know the status of Newburn while we also know the status of Salt Wallow. Um, uh, it will send, once you guys have taken over Salt Wallow, we'll send in troops to fortify um, after we've secured Newburn. It's still, uh, uh, still risky to um, split up our troops so much. Does anyone know about uh, teleportation circles? Yeah, they do. Oh, I mean, we've seen them. Yeah, and, I mean, teleportation circles are able to move a group of, like, ten at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and they do take a while to set up. Uh, Maybe we could set up some of those those weird circles that we saw at the towers. Maybe one in Newburn, one in Salt Wallow, and then we can move troops between the two as needed. Well... Theoretically, there should already be teleportation circles in those towns. We just don't know where. All right, we'll find them, and then we can um, travel back and forth. And the high magister will kind of pipe up. This is actually an interesting choice to think about. But if we sent in these guys who are good at getting information, apparently, uh, to find these teleportation circles, um, there might be a way we could do. An attack from an unexpected location. Yeah. It's a shame there's nothing like hot wire teleportation circle to just bring the entire army to the capital. We'd have to do it in like groups of ten at a time, but like that would be a powerful surprise attack. Well, he's not even saying the capital, he's just saying like New Bern. Yeah. And then the capital. And then the world. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> uh, I don't think that is something that would work in Baldur, but I think it's step one. It might be good to have to secretly pull in troops from this teleportation circle before, instead of just marching up to the town, they'll be seeing that they'll be reinforced. Yeah. What he said. Uh, but is that something that you guys would be willing to do? Um, head into Newburn first, find this teleportation circle, um, Obviously, we have to send a mage with you. Well, I thought we were going to go to Salt Wallow. We'll find it, and then you can send people there. From to Salt Wallow? Yeah, as needed. 
Well, what he is saying is, um, you guys go into New Bern, find the teleportation circle, let them know where it is, because they don't know where it's at, so they can't use oh, it. Oh, and then they'll just start teleporting people in, so it's not like a big army march. Yeah, the place. so in instead of just, like, marching straight into town, they kind of amass, like, wherever that circle is, and pull troops there and kind of attack within. Okay. That sounds good. Um, and then you guys, after, um, once you guys know where the teleportation circle is and let them know, you guys will head to Salt Wallow and, like, coordinate an attack. Alright. So we're going back to Newburn? Yes. Squire, yeah. bring me my horse. Oh, boy. You guys haven't said anything against that plan. If you want to, you can. Yeah. No, oh, I'm good. Um, okay, so you guys will start making preparations, you kind of solidify the plan with everybody there, and everybody in the council agrees upon it. Um, and, uh, you guys get ready for the next day to set out, and we're actually going to end it there. What? what? It's only 11. <laughs> we need battle. Uh, no battle. Sorry. It's going to be a short session, just because we have to go help my sister move, but, um... Perfect. Now I have a lot of stuff to prepare. <laughs> All right. Well, and that and Ford's just gonna go hire a squire. Hire a squire. Yeah. When he said squire, bring my horse. Uh, he didn't have one. Uh, you guys will be um, given like a higher ranking mage who will come with you guys, just so he can do the teleportation circle stuff. Yeah. He's What's his mage. name? God, you guys are evil. You'll meet him next time on the Kundorian Rebel. <laughs> what type of mage is he? What does he specialize in? Yeah, is he, uh, is he a girl? A wizard? He's a wizard. Is she hot? He's male. Oh. I'm not giving you guys a female. I just don't <laughs> trust you. What? <laughs> what? We behave. We have a female. We've had one this whole time. Yeah, she can stand up for herself. I no can. No one's tried anything. She is a strong independent. Black. No one's tried anything yet, so we'll see. <laughs> Rayon is a strong independent black woman. Who would even? <laughs> don't uh, know, man. <laughs> obviously not Ford. Arrows can't talk. I'm not interested in Asmir. Is what? What do you mean? Asmir? What? You're not interested in Asmir. <laughs> You're not interested in Asmir. That's rude. No, Asmir's Every, not interested. Everybody's, everybody's secretly interested in Asmir. Again, I see. Asmir has to like beat women and men like left, right, and center off of him. He's just so good looking. Eh. Um, what his was name the issue will with be... Eros? I don't know. I think he said he can't talk? That's his name. Elman? Yep. What's up, Elmo? Let's do this. Sounds like a nerd. Elmo! <laughs> he is a nerd. He's got oh, lots yeah. of books and scrolls. Is he a redhead? Well, he's no Kevin. No, he's not Kevin. I'm gonna walk up to him and ask him what he did to earn his promotion. Oh god, um, you don't want to know. Promotion. Uh, you he said he's a higher ranking mage than us. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> I guess one higher rank than you guys. Yeah. Yeah. What did he um, do to earn? Well, he I mean, a lot of dicks. He's, the, yeah. he's the net of the commander. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a milk mustache. He's he's the nephew of the high commander. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> exactly. Is he supposed to no, know he's not? <laughs> No, uh, he'd be like, well, I mean, I just, I, I I've got, I, I've done a lot of research, um, into things, and I, I've been here a while, so. How are your research really? We took down the wall. We're still the first oh, rank. Oh, yeah. We took I, down I, the wall. <laughs> I've heard, and you guys also saved a whole town by yourself, although that was against orders, so I'm sure that didn't help. They didn't specifically say not to save the town. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, they did not. <sighs> Alright, well, I guess, um. I gotta just no. challenge someone to a duel. I'll fight you, Forge. No, you have to go help oh, me. Gosh. I will fight anyone. So. My mom is telling, texting me right now. What are we. Uh, uh, character, what are we done? Um. 
So you guys are just getting ready, basically. Um, you guys are going to go into Newburn, and hopefully undetected, and find a teleportation circle, and then you're going to go take over the town of Saltwallow all by yourselves. 